Now we come to another activity. This activity for document flow is intended to demonstrate the concepts of documents with multiple records, splitting documents, and running documents individually. We'll see a process that uses counters and logs to show how the documents are flowing through the process behind the scenes. I'm going to go through this, which is on pages 52 to 65 of the activity guide. To begin here in the training account, I'll create a new folder under developer one. And then in the process library, I'll search for the document flow activity. Install that. and view the process. The process begins with a no data start shape. Data is placed into the document here with the message shape. And the data consists of a simple CSV flat file with multiple records that represent fictional machinery in service at different locations. So depending on each machine's operational status, it will be routed down the correct path. You can see that some are true, Others are false for that operational status. Let's look at the decision shape. You'll see here that the decision shape validates the question, is the machine operational? If a machine is operational, the flat file profile element of operational will have a value of true. Now looking at the set properties initialize shape. There are two properties being set in this shape and each is initialized to zero. Both are dynamic process properties with the map counter and then the step counter. We'll look at the map, contact flat file to account XML. And here in the map, there is a map counter function. So when data passes through the map, the function will output the value of one. The second document or record will output a two and so on. So the result is incrementally numbered data for all operational machines with the last number equaling the total. Look at the map function here. You'll see that the ref function receives no input. So this input pane is blank. In step one, the function retrieves the dynamic process property of map counter. In step two, it adds one to the value it just retrieved. And then this result is sent to two places. First, to the map counter, and then also to step three, where it's saved as the updated value for the map counter. It will close the function and close the map. Next, we'll look at the set properties increment shape. With the step counter, a dynamic process property of step counter and then a static value of one are concatenated. So this step counter differs from the map counter. The map counter adds values mathematically while the step counter concatenates strings. So this step counter will have an initial value of zero then each successive machine will add a one. So we'll have zero one, then zero one one, and so on. This is similar to tally marks. Next, we'll look at the notify shapes to see how they're used to write the counter into the process log with a message level of warning. So here, the map document counter with that value of the map counter and then the second notify shape bringing in the value from the step counter. All right, let's run a test of the process and view the results. So we'll look at the stop shape here at the end of the true path. Under shape source data, we see that only one document went down the true path. We're going to view the process log here. And then if we scroll down to the notify shape, 
Remember that the notify shape is logging a warning level message that enters the count to the process log. So here in the notify, we see executing notify shape with one document. Now from the minimum status to show, we'll change the level to warning. Then we can look at that warning message. So the error pop-up window displays the notify message with the counter value at eight. So this reveals that the notify shape was executed with the batch document, but the counter had already reached a value of eight before the notify shape was executed. We'll go back to edit mode. And we're going to add a data process shape to split the documents. Under processing steps, we'll add a step and change the type to split documents. The profile type is flat file, and for the split options, we're going to split by line. We will retain the first line as column header. So we'll click OK. Now I'm going to place this data process shape before the decision shape. We'll save and run another test. Now we see that both branches of the decision shape have been navigated. And if we look at the shape source data at the end of the true path, we see that there are five documents. And at the end of the false path, there are three. Let's view the log. If we look at the data process shape, we see that it executes with one document, splits the documents, which results in eight documents. So the shape completes with eight documents out. If we scroll down and look at the map, we see that the map is executing with five documents. And if we look at the increment set property shape, we see that that is executing with three documents. Remember, this shape is counting the non-operational machines. The decision shape executes with eight documents. Previously, the decision shape received one document with eight records, and it read only the first valid line, which contained a true value. So the entire document was sent down the true path. But now the original document splits into eight documents before reaching the decision shape. So this shape receives eight individual documents, inspects the operational element of each, and then routes them accordingly. First, documents for all five operational machines passed through the map shape, and then the documents for the non-operational machines passed through the increment or set properties shape. We can see that here in the logs. Remember that all true documents are processed to completion before false documents are processed. All right, from the minimum status to show, we're going to change the level here to warning. Now with the minimum status at warning, we see here that the notify message has five concatenated strings, each with a value of five instead of the interim count. And here in the other notify shape from our step document counter, the tally marks are not correct. So we're going to add flow control to handle one by one document processing. From the logic tab of the shapes palette, I'm going to click and drag a flow control shape onto the canvas. Under batch options, we're going to run each document individually. I've placed the flow control shape before the decision shape. Let's run a test and see how the documents process with the flow control shape added. All right, our test completed. Let's view the log. 
and set the minimum status to warning. And now the notify shapes are being executed with individual documents instead of in batches of five and three. So at the time each notify shape is executed, the counters register only the number of documents processed at that point. So our map document counter is working properly and so is the step document counter. All right, now you can work through the document flow activity that's found on pages 52 to 65 of the activity guide.